Good morning. What a blessing it is. I was uh, walking in this morning, and it was a couple of weeks ago we had we had Veterans Day, and we celebrated. You let me come up here, and I want to welcome back Senior Chief Fleming to the church. 29 years of youth ministry for me, and there are highlights that you have, and Heather is one of my highlights, and it's always a blessing for me to see her at whichever holiday she comes home. But thank you, Senior Chief Heather Fleming celebrating her and her service to you guys as she's been everywhere all over the world taking care of business for us and and so on and i was driving up here this morning i drive over the river and through the woods to church i go and i was looking at all these wonderful billboards coming up through rhode island on 95 and you, you can take your dog to dogtopia there was two different billboards for that there was two different billboards across from the other for dispensaries so what are you thankful for Fast cash, also in Providence. What are you thankful for? Where do you put your, where do you put your focus on? I think Pastor Justin, I don't know where he went. Uh, he mentioned this morning in his transition exactly what I wanted to remind you of today. There is a direction you should need to be going with your gratitude. And he said that during the transition. And there are small things in our lives that we're grateful for. And like your dog running up to greet you after you've had a tiring day. I don't have a dog. I love other people's dogs. But that dog that runs up to you. Finding some money in that fall jacket you just put on recently, you know, that you forgot you had. Wrapping yourself in a blanket and enjoying a cup of warm coffee when it's cold and rainy out like it has been finally. Weren't we praising God for the rain the last three days? We were. Um, and, and then there's things in your relationships like being cared for when you're ill or maybe, maybe you parked your car in long-term parking at the airport but your family still showed up at the airport to meet you after you're on a trip. Or being accepted even though your spouse knows you'll never, ever change. Right, Carlos? You'll never change. But your spouse accepts you for who you are anyway. And someone saying they're proud of you. These are all things that are be grateful for. And then we put all our energy into those things on those billboards, those things like this in our lives. And we invest and we care about this. And we chase like Solomon chasing after the wind after these empty rewards, and the result, we even mess up our lives even further, chasing things that we're grateful for that aren't really worth chasing for. And life gets so full, doesn't it? And yet for you or for me, in the busyness, remember, God is in the business of taking care of you, even when you don't even think about it. And we need to respond to that. We need to show how we appreciate a good father who takes care of us. And we need to have a deep gratitude for everything he does. All that whole worship set that this worship team just led, sung a lot of that, didn't they? And it takes time, it takes discipline, and it takes an, an accustomed mindset of thankfulness. And it's easy for some of us, and it's not easy for the rest of us to have this, this mindset of gratitude, to, to have the gratitude and the gratefulness for the simplest things of life, the things that are happening today. And having an attitude of gratitude. When you're grateful, your focus narrows to what is right now. And not on what isn't. Or what could have been or should have been. And all those woulda, coulda, should as you always say to yourself when you're thinking to yourself, wow, I could have been here. But no, when you're mindful of the simplest joys of life, it narrows down to right now. And it's powerful and it's valuable because you brought back to this present moment. The only point in time that's within Maybe full control of anything, right? From taking a breath to appreciating a family and a friendship to have, you've got to be grateful. But what direction do you send that gratitude, like Justin just asked? What direction do you send that gratitude? And if you're looking to develop a deeper sense of appreciation, you need to transition to a spiritual attitude of gratitude. And how do you imagine God in that? As we look into this whole quick devotion. How do you conceive the creator of the galaxies, the star clusters, and everything you know on this earth? How do you picture him? Some theologians say you can't have that concept. You can't have a concept because it'll never be God. Because God will always be greater and more wondrous in your imagination or your concepts. That your finite minds can't imagine an infinite God. I don't believe that's true for me and you. Why? Because I think we have the word of God. I think the word of God has so much encouragement that, that communicates who God really is, who he truly is, who he, who he really is, and how he really cares for us, and how we can trust in him. 
So I was reading the, the book of Job, and I was like shocked by this scripture. And I'm going to read a portion of it where it says this. As long as my breath is in me and the spirit of God in my nostrils. That is crazy. As long as the breath is in me and the spirit of God is in my nostrils. Even now, as you draw in that deep breath right now, think of that phrase. The spirit of God is in my nostrils. Can you grasp that? Can you grasp that's just how close the God of the cosmos really is? That he is that close? That he's in each breath. The spirit of God is in each breath that you're taking. Can you, can you perceive it? Can you fathom? Can you know and experience that that is how near God really is to you? The breath you are taking in is more than just there. It's God breathing life into you. It's the same breath of life that he blew upon this chaos that you now live in. That blew upon the ancient prophets. That blew upon the Valley of the Dry Bones. That blew upon the Church of Pentecost. That blew in the spirit that raised Jesus from death. That, that, that blew the spirit raising us to Christ anew and the supernatural dimension of living that you enjoy today. David grasped this in Psalm 75, where he, I'm going to read a portion of it. We praise you, God. We praise you for your name is near, and people will tell of your wondrous deeds. Skipping down to verse 9. As for me, I will declare this forever. I will sing praise to the God of Jacob, who says, I will cut off the horns of all the wicked, but the horns of the righteous will be lifted up. We will praise you, God. We will praise you for your name is near. People tell of your wondrous deeds. How do you imagine God and how do you perceive him? He is not the God of up there. He is not that God. He is the God that is close to you, is near, as I said earlier, to your own breath. Luke does a great job of Paul speaking in this wonderful lyrical wording where he said this in Acts 17 where Paul said, For in him we live and move and have our being, as also some of you have known, own poets have said, for we also are also his offspring. For he is in the God in whom we live and move and have our being. Paul wanted these Athenians to know and wants you to know today to recall that although sin re separates from God, he is actually not far from us, for in him we live and move. And have our being. And Paul was speaking to a bunch of idol worshipers, providing instruction for them, for maybe for you this morning, to know that God is not some lifeless idol fashioned by human hands, but He is the living God, and in Him you live. You live. Can we truly offer up gratitude to a Father God who is right there within you? This is the ESV Psalm 145. The Lord is near to all who call on Him, to all who call on Him in truth. Now that missionary who just had his house burned down, you don't think he's calling out right now? You don't think he needs God to be near to him? In truth, what am I going to do? In truth, what am I going to do? Simply use that breath, the God breath in you, and call out to him. With the calling, have an attitude of gratitude that he is near to all who simply call, simply, simply call on him. If you're hurting this morning and you're crushed this morning, he's near to that too. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. I quoted this to somebody this week. Ironically, they reached out to me and they were really hurting. And it's just, I was already preparing this message. Right? I mean, why not use it, right? How better can we offer up thankfulness to God to know that we're thankful because it's very near. This is there to us. God wants to teach us that he is good and what he does is good. And understand to truly have a perspective that is real. And it's spiritually real. It's not just something like on a billboard that gives you fast cash. Holy Spirit leaps, to have, leaps for us to have this right attitude. And have to, you have to choose to be grateful. I know it's not easy. And back to Psalm 175. We thank you, God. We thank you, O oh God. We give thanks because you are near people. Everywhere will tell of your wonderful deeds. And we thank you, God, 
But are you one of those people everywhere this morning who want to tell of his wonderful deeds? I'm not talking to be flowery. I always say to people, you don't have to give them some King James version of life. Just talk about what's going on. Talk about how God is doing wonderful deeds in your life. And are you willing to recognize that God is good and good to you in a way that is different? Perhaps that he's good to others? In closing, here's the list, if you didn't hear anything I said. Here's a great list of benefits you should be grateful for this morning and exercise this attitude of gratitude every day in your life. He forgives your sins. He heals your diseases. He redeems you from a life of destruction. He crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies to have compassion. He satisfies us with good things. He renews our youth like eagles. He executes righteousness and judgment for all the oppressed. So if you're one of the oppressed and you're being treated unjustly, he executes righteousness and judgment for all. He makes his way and acts known to us. This attitude of gratitude is warranted for the many benefits that we redeem every single day just by being his child. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this morning. I thank you for the words that are about to be Share the, the words of wonderful deeds, God. I ask you to anoint every ear, not just the speaker, the ear, God, to hear, God, what is needed, what needs to be inspirational in the lives of the hearer, God, as well as the sharer, God. I ask you to bless this time and bless your people, God. There's so many needs in this body, God, that, God, I ask, Lord, that we would just simply look, glance over our shoulder momentarily and see how near you are and the wonderful deeds you did and just to go out and discuss with people. In your name we ask this. Amen. Thank you. So can I get the pastors here, at least three of you, to grab a microphone? Just three of you grab. So what we're going to do now, we do this every year, is we're going to have popcorn testimonies. Now, popcorn pops pretty quick, right? So I'm just going to lay out some guidelines. You only have a few sentences to share what God has done in your life. We don't need to know about Aunt Myrtle's cat and the cousin that lives next door. Just get to the point, what God has done in your life. Now, I grew up in a, a church, a Pentecostal church, that testimonies happen Sunday night or Wednesday night, and it was you know, sometimes you get the gong show, um, quite honestly. However, something deeply profound theologically and even psychologically happens when we hear what God is doing in someone else's life. It affirms that God is active, it validates our faith, and it gives us hope for the future. So the words of even a, that's, I guess that's the point. The words person sharing what God has done builds our faith. And so we're going to take time now in today's service to do that. So who would like to go first and share what God has done in their life this year or recently? doesn't matter. We'll start with Joe. Good morning. About two years ago, I was di diagnosed with uh, cancer of the prostate. Last year, my mom died. On the same day I buried her, my grandson was born. Earlier this year, I got diagnosed with diabetes. A few months later, I couldn't get up. I couldn't walk for three days. I had gout in my feet. A few weeks ago, you know, you must endure the pains of labor because it will change your behavior. I changed my behavior. And I thank God for all these doctors, for their services, for all those medical fields, because we need them. We don't think about it much, because that's what they do, right? No. That's who they are. That's what they believe in. What do you believe in? I believe in the almighty God, who heals, who protects. I bought a a few weeks ago, I went for my uh, last injection. 
So every six months, I get an injection right here. Six months of medication. And I get hot flashes. To this day, I, I get intense hot flashes that boils me. It just, I know how your women feel. <laughs> but I, do it, I, I get it every 30 minutes. But I have a God who oversees everything. So I got my last injection. He looks at my numbers. Your numbers are very good. Your PSA count. Your cancer is in remission. I want to thank all of you for all your support and prayers. As we cannot do about him, we, we're alive today. You know, somebody once told me just earlier this year, I was sitting in that chair and, was, and sitting here today saying, Joe, God just told me he's got a lot of plans for you. You're not going nowhere. Amen. Someone else? I want to give all the praise and honor and glory to God for everything that he has done in my life. I'm going to get emotional. God has saved me many times. There was a time I did not believe in God. And I, I changed. And I now I tell everyone about God and what he has done in my life. And, uh, and when people tell me that they don't believe or they have another uh, religion because of their culture, I, I pray for them, you know, because um, once I was there where I didn't believe. I used to tell people I was an atheist. God has done many miracles, but this year, the beginning of this year, I was diagnosed with liver cirrhosis. Now, I, have, uh, I was um, diagnosed with lupus back in 2011, and I almost died. And God extended my years. God blessed me with adding years to my life, and when the doctors told me I couldn't live, I lived, and I'm still living, and that went in remission. But this year, um, I saw three doctors. They ran a bunch of testings. And the liver cirrhosis, they said it was a rare um, diagnosis because I don't drink. I, you know, I have, like, I don't do drugs. I don't do things that will actually damage my liver. But then they came to the conclusion that it was because of lupus. At one point, I... I had uh, the, the lupus was out of remission and attacked my body and it hurt my liver. And now we're talking about having a, um, a transplant. So I ended up uh, hospitalized in June uh, for a couple of days because the veins in my esophagus were about to explode due that my liver was not functioning well. So after that happened, the doctors gathered around me and they said, all right, Jen, we had to talk about having a plan for um, a transplant. Now, I have a father who had a liver transplant years ago, and I know what is a liver transplant. It's, it's big. It's not just a little surgery. It's, it's going to affect you for the rest of your life. I'm a recent mom. I had a baby, um, and I came to God, and I said, God, I know that you do everything perfect. When the doctors told me I couldn't have a baby and I went through IVF and that didn't work and then I just lean on you, you gave me a baby. I know that this somehow, I don't know what's your plan, but you're going to make it disappear. And I praise him. I praise him. So sometimes when we get bad news, we have to praise him in the middle of the darkness. We had to pray and praise him. Because out of that darkness, we're going to see a light. So I went for my biopsy. And then I sat with the doctors. And they couldn't believe it. They said to me, you don't have liver cirrhosis. It's gone. <laughs> They still have me do some testings and testings. Um, they just can't explain. Um, but th there was for sure, there was on the several exams and uh, sonograms and x-rays and 
bunch of testings that images that they did and blood work, there was liver cirrhosis. And, and uh, now they tell me that the scientific explanation is that um, I have high blood pressure in my, um, like in my esophagus, and that had caused a signal or make it seem like it was cirrhosis, but it was not. So, but I, I know my, my explanation is my king. Amen. Jesus saved me. And he has allowed me to be here because he has a plan. I still don't know what's the plan, but this testimony, I want you to use it because if you're going through an illness, a disease, a, uh, a diagnosis, or a relative is going through that, he can change it. That medical report, he can change it. He can turn it all around and make the doctors go all crazy. Why it changed? But he can make it happen. Thank you. I just want to thank the Lord for almost 66 years. Uh, I've given my heart to the Lord. Of course, I was only three, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> I better not lie in church, right? No. But I think the most wonderful thing is having the Lord with you every day. You can trust him for your family. You can trust him for any problem you have. And um, I think that's the greatest thing, knowing the Lord and having him by your side as your good friend. Thank you. I'm just really thankful for God's faithfulness and um, something that I've always kind of done. I don't know where I, where I picked it up or where I heard it somewhere, but um, I've always continued to ask God to show his faithfulness and to show his goodness. It's, it's a morning prayer that I really like to, um, to, to do daily. And um, just something that happened this year that just kind of like blew my, blew my socks off. Um, I was at an event. It was a Christian music festival in New Hampshire. And um, I was helping out with some things because it was a little early. And um, I go up to one of the people running it, and she was, like, in tears. I was trying to take a picture of her, and she's, like, blocking herself, like, don't take a picture. Um, but I was like, what's wrong? And um, she pulls me into a room, and she goes, you see that man right there? He hasn't left his house in three years. Um, he has severe anxiety. I, I don't really know the full story, um, but he bought tickets to the event and then emailed and said, oh, hey, like, I, I don't think I can come. Like, I just, it's too much. So they upgraded him to the VIP, um, which was well before a ton of people got there. So she was just like, come to this if you're comfortable. If you want to leave, you can leave. He almost ended up staying for the whole thing. You know, like, praise God. Like, just the things that he does and, and, and the testimonies that he leads me towards are just so inspiring to me personally. So I want to thank all of you guys for sharing um, your testimonies. Selena. So God never leaves you on empty. Um, this year was uh, gut-wrenching for me, for us. Um, but you still have to make a decision. And... Me, I learned how to make these decisions over the years by going through things that God allowed me to go through, such as being homeless, such as being going through abuse. He gave me the heart for homeless people. Um, but he also has worked through this season in my life. And even though it was the one that broke me the most, and I went through a lot of hard things, but... I can tell you that I feel the strongest because he was my only strength through all this. And in the midst of all this, we, we can see his goodness and his faithfulness because he says, I am always with you. He doesn't say that I was with you or I, I will be with you. He says, I am always with you. So... Um, another quick thing that I wanted to share is that um, I've been praying for my country. I've been praying for my islands. Uh, I am from the Azores in Portugal. Uh, I came here 13 years ago, and I've been coming to CIC for eight years already. 
And this church has shaped me as a Christian. Everyone here, people that have been close to me, uh, holding my hand, um, being there for me. Um, I've been praying for my country. And the first time I went back with this man right here, uh, <laughs> I prayed. I looked over to the ocean and I said, because it's 99% of Catholic people there, and there's a lot of suicide, there's a lot of addiction, um, a lot of, um, there's just, you, you feel the spiritual heaviness when you go back. So I prayed, I looked at the ocean, and I prayed, every knee will bow, and every, every tongue will profess the name of Jesus Christ, here in this place, all these islands, and all over the country. So when uh, Joel spoke about Mozambique, um, God put in our hearts to, to go there and um, to speak the word of God. We, we are doing it little by little. But we found out this year that there is a church there that has been there for 66 years, a Christian church in a very small island. And David even asked me, are, are they hiding under the rocks or something? So I was able to connect with them. And we are going there in three weeks. We are going to visit them. And they are telling me, we need revival. We need young blood, a bold blood like you guys to come here and to shift this atmosphere. So I believe that God is doing something in that place right there. Yeah. He is working in my family. Uh, my parents, when I became a Christian, uh, they said that I was a fanatic, that I was crazy. But now my mom is reading her Bible every single day. And a lot of members of my family are understanding because they're listening. I've been praying for their hearts to be open to the word. And not just because it's me talking. It's the Holy Spirit that I pray every single day, every conversation that I have with all of them, that it's the Holy Spirit speaking. So we are going there in three weeks. I ask for everyone to keep us in prayer because God is going to move mightily there. I don't know if we're going to move there in 5, 10, 15, 20 years. We are preparing ourselves. We're working really hard so we can travel back and forth. But also, there is a pastor there. He went to school with me, to high school with me, and he is preparing himself to become a pastor. He is attending the uh, uh, Assemblies of God um, in the mainland. Uh, to become a pastor. So praise God for that. God is working there. 